before I start today, I just want to say one thing. I've been told that some people find it irritating that I, um, I quote Bhagavan's Tamil words so much when the majority of people who are listening to me probably don't know Tamil. Um, I apologize for that. It is, um, there are several reasons for it. Partly is because, partly because a number of people who do um, either attend these meetings or watch these videos are Tamilians and do know Bhagavan's Tamil words. Also, um, Bhagavan's words have very, that is the words Bhagavan has, has himself written, so we can absolutely rely upon as being his words. They have their own power. And um, just out of my reverence for his words, I tend to, rather than just always be give, giving just my English translation of them, I also quote them. But I appreciate that some people may find this irritating. So I will try and restrain myself. But please forgive me if I, um, if I, can, can, if I don't always manage. Um, moreover, today, the first thing I've been asked to talk about, uh, a couple of friends have asked me, since tomorrow is Kartikai Deepam, uh, but it would be appropriate, this would be an appropriate time to talk about the verse that Bhagavan composed on the, uh, the truth of seeing Deepam. Um, so I'll start by, um, in fact, there are two verses, one composed by Murugana, one composed by Bhagavan. I'll talk about both these verses. And because I'm talking about the verses, inevitably I have to, um, I have to refer to the Tamil. Um, but I will, as, as I say, I will try to keep um, my quoting of Tamil to a minimum. Um, and please bear with me if I, <laughs> if I don't always succeed. Um, in... Um, on November the 24th, 1931, which was uh, Deepam Day, um, in answer to some uh, to questions, Bhagavan explained, um, the, explained Aranatra Tattvam, that means the, the truth or reality or significant, real signification of Aranatra. And Murugana recorded in a Tamil verse what Bhagavan had, um, had, had explained. And uh, then when Murugana showed the verse to Bhagavan, he asked Bhagavan to compose a similar verse on the tattva, the uh, signification of um, seeing uh, Deepam. Um, so it's these two verses that I'll talk about now. Just to give a little bit of background, um, uh, Deepam means a light. And in this context, Kartikai Deepam refers to the um, well, it's celebrated in a number of temples in South India, but the, the main celebration of Deepam is in Tiruvannamalai when, uh, and at six o'clock in the evening of uh, the main day of the Deepam festival, which is tomorrow, um, the, uh, a beacon light is lit on the top of the hill and it usually continues burning for about 10 days. Um, Kartike is the Tamil name of the, uh, of the month that in Sanskrit is called Kritika, which refers to, um, um, it's the name of a, one of the constellations. I believe in English it's called Pleiades. Um, it's, the, it's the month in which the moon is in conjunction with that constellation. Um, it, uh, it's, um, in Tamil Nadu, it's between mid-November and mid-December. So between mid-November and mid-December, at about the time of the full moon, uh, sometimes on full moon day, sometimes one or two days before or after, is the day when the moon is in conjunction with this constellation. And that is the day when the Deepam is lit on the top of the hill. That's why the date varies from year to year, but it's always between mid-November and mid-December. Um, the significance of this, uh, the signification of this, um, Bhagavan has explained in a verse, so I will come to that. So um, the first verse is the, the verse that um, uh, Murugana composed. Oh, and one more thing about this. When Arunachala Stuti Panchakam, the five hymns to Arunachala are uh, recited, these two verses are usually recited at the beginning. Um, and they're also included in Guru Vachika Kavai as some as among the prefatory verses, because it was actually as part of Guru Vachika Kavai that Murugana 
was recording what Bhagavan said, and so he recorded this verse. But in the end, this verse wasn't included in the main text of Guruvachya Kavai, because it was included in Aranacha Stuti Panchakam. Um, what Murugana says in the, in the verse he recorded, um, uh, the, the verse is two, two halves. Basically, it's a sentence that consists of a subject and a subject predicate. No, no, sorry, um, a subject um, complement. That is what, what the subject is. So um, the, uh, the subject comes at the end. The subject in this verse is um, um, uh, um, Marayavanum Malum Nata Ariadu Nalunculea Anna Madi uh, Oli Anamale in a Dumeye. Um, Anamale in Dumeye means the, the truth or reality of Aranach. Of, uh, Anamale is a Tamil name of um, Aranachala. So the truth or reality, the actual truth of um, the, the stress on the Meye that makes it the actual truth of uh, anomaly is, and then he's, he, the sentence goes on to say what it is, but before, but there's also a relative clause for anomaly. Bhagavan just, uh, well, Murugan in his verse, but it's what Bhagavan, it's recording what Bhagavan said. He describes anomaly as Marayavnam Malum Nata Ariadu Nalam Kuleya Ana Madi Oliya. That means which shone in their midst, uh, in the midst of whom? Marayavam uh, Malam. Marayavam is, um, is a Tamil name for Brahma, the God as the creator. Um, Malam, uh, Ma Mal means is a na Tamil name for Vishnu. So Brahma and Vishnu. Um, uh, Nata Ariyadu means um, uh, um, um, uh, when uh, Ari, Ariyadu literally means not knowing and Nata means to reach. It's referring to a, the inability of Brahma and Vishnu to reach the top and bottom of the column of fire, uh, which was the form in which Aaron actually appeared between them. And um, uh, uh, Nalam Kulea means um, uh, when their uh, pride was dispersed or destroyed. It can also mean uh, to destroy their pride. Um, but um, in this context, it's, uh, it's more appropriate to take it as when, when their pride was dispersed. Um, this is referring to a traditional story, the traditional story of the origin of Arunachala. That is, once Brahm, having forgotten about the existence of Shiva, who, according to the Shaivite view, is the original, is the, is the, is the, the principal one of the three uh, three mortis. Um, so, having forgotten about Shiva, Brahma and Vishnu were quarrelling among themselves as to who is greater. And Brahma was saying, "I am the creator. So, without me, there couldn't be any world or anything. So, I, I am the greatest." And Vishnu said, "You merely create, but I sustain it all. There's sustaining. It's much more." It's, Creating is easy. S uh, sustaining the whole thing is what is difficult. So I am the greatest. So this quarrel was going on between them. And um, it be in became a, a big fight, which was putting all the worlds in danger. So between them, uh, a column of fire appeared. They were both puzzled by this because Brahma hadn't created it and Vishnu wasn't sustaining it. So how this column of fire appeared? Um, so then they uh, decided among themselves that this column of, they could use this column of fire to test which is superior. So whoever could find the top or bottom of this column of fire would be declared the, the, the superior, the greatest one. So Brahma took the form of a swan and began flying upwards to find the top of the um, column. And Vishnu took the form of a boar and started burrowing down uh, into the ground to find the bottom. Um, they went on searching for thousands of years, according to the story. And um, as Vishnu went, uh, burrowed deeper and deeper, he became more and more humble. 
and he um, he began to think to himself how foolish it, it is to um, think I am the greatest. That's just ego. So um, it's to to think of oneself as greatest is not good. It's and um, it's because of our pride, but um, but uh, we got into this quarrel. So. Uh, we, we, neither of us are going to be able to find the top or bottom of this column of fire. It's something greater than either of us. So um, he decided to return and admit defeat. Brahma was flying higher and higher and higher, but becoming more and more exhausted. And he was also coming to the conclusion that he'd never be able to reach the top. But he thought to himself, how can I admit that I have failed? Isn't one's pride one's greatest possession? It's better to tell a lie than to, um, than to lose one's pride. So he decided to, to lie, but he had uh, reached the top. And when he was coming to this conclusion, he saw a flower falling from above him. And he stopped the flower and asked, who are you? And the flower said, I, I was uh, on the top of this column of fire um, as, as uh, I was placed there for worship but I had the desire to see the world, so I fell down and I'd been falling for thousands of years. Um, and then um, Brahma asked, can I reach the top? No, he, the flower said, no, you'll never be able to reach the top. It's, yeah, it's far, far away. Then Brahma said, okay, but can you bear false witness for me and say that I have seen the top? And the flower agreed. So they returned and at the starting point, they met um, Vishnu. And Vishnu humbly said, admitted that he had failed to reach the bottom. And he knew very well that Brahma would also have failed. But to his surprise, Brahma said, I reached the top and this flower, I brought this flower here as my witness. Um, Vishnu knew in his heart that that wasn't true, but how to prove it wrong. Then out of the column of fire, uh, Lord Shiva appeared in, um, in human-like form and uh, blessed uh, uh, Vishnu and said, because of your humility, you will always be worshipped in this world as equal to me. And he said to um, Brahma, because, of, because you lied and because, of, uh, um, and because you were unwilling to give, up, to give up your pride, you will not be worshipped in any temples. Um, and then they, they, Brahma was thereby humbled and they both um, humbly worshipped Lord, Lord Shiva. So this is the story. This is what Murugana is referring to in this relative clause when he refer, says about Arunachala, which shone between Brahma and Vishnu when their pride was dispersed due to their not knowing how to, to not, or due to their being, un, it literally means not knowing, but it implies being unable to reach the top or bottom. So that's the subject. The, what, it, what is the actual truth of, our, of an amle is what, is what is said in the, other, the rest of the verse, which is actually the beginning of the verse. Um, that is, buddhi ahankaram pulambeda ongum madi ideam tan. Tan means, um, it, it's a word, it, Tamil, the Tamil word meaning oneself. So it can mean, um, it can mean oneself, me in the sense of ourself as we actually are. It can also, in this context, it can be just uh, um, um, an, in, um, uh, an intensifier. So it intensifies the meaning of the word idiom. Idiom is a Tamil form of the Sanskrit word, hridia. it means heart. So it can mean, so idiom tan can mean heart itself or one's, uh, oneself in the sense of one's true nature, the heart. Um, uh, both meanings are appropriate here. I, I, we can take either. And muddy means the center. So it, we can take it as uh, muddy idiom tan as oneself, the, cent the heart, the center. Meaning this, the heart is the center of all things. Um, and uh, then there's a, a relative clause, buddhi uh, ahankaram uh, pulambeda ongum. Ongum means which um, surges or uh, which surged, uh, well, which surges actually. 
um, uh, uh, buddhi ahankaram. Buddhi, buddhi means intellect. Ahankaram means ego. Um, uh, uh, um, pulambu ida means literally means when, when they suffer anguish. Um, they suffer anguish. Why? Because they despaired at not being able to um, to know. Uh, if, if being unable, it implies being unable, to, despairing because of being unable to know their real nature. Um, and there, uh, when we, when we, when the intellect and ego despair, not being able to know their real nature, then they become humble and willing to sur surrender and subside. That is the implication. So the whole verse means um, uh, oneself, the heart, the center, which surges uh, when intellect and ego suffer anguish, is the actual truth of anamale, which shone between Brahma and Vishnu when their pride was dispersed due to not knowing, uh, to uh, due, due not being unable to reach the top and bo or bottom. Um, we can slightly expand that and also. Uh, take the subject first. The actual truth of Anamala or Arunachala, which shone forth as a col column of light between Brahma and Vishnu when their pride was dispersed or destroyed uh, due to their not knowing or being unable uh, to uh, reach its top or bottom. Uh, the, the actual truth is oneself, the heart, the center, which surges or is exalted when intellect and ego suffer anguish, um, despairing because they're not being able to know their real nature. Um, so in this verse, um, what I mean, Murugan has recorded what Bhagavan said, this is describing um, the, the goal we are to, to reach. That is when, when ego and intellect subside, what shines forth is our real nature, the heart, the center. And that is what is signified by uh, our natural shining forth between Brahma and Vishnu when their pride was uh, subdued uh, due to their inability to know the top and bottom. So in this, uh, um, here Bhagavan is comparing um, Brahma to buddhi, to the intellect, and Vishnu to ego. Um, the significance of this is Brahma, Brahma, as I say, Brahma represents ego. So Brahma flying high is, is um, signifies the ego, intellect going outwards. So long as we allow our intellect to go outwards and uh, seek, the, seek the truth outside, we will always be deluded. And if we come to a conclusion and think that we have understood the reality by allowing our intellect to go outwards, that is a lie because the truth does not lie outside. Uh, in order to know what the ultimate reality is, we need to know ourselves. So as long as we allow our intellect to go outwards, we are deluding ourselves. We can never know that that is, as Bhagavan often said, what is the use of knowing everything else without knowing oneself the knower? If we don't know, if we don't even have a correct knowledge of who is the knower, how can all our knowledge of other things be correct knowledge? That is, the, the knower is nothing but ego. So long as we take ourselves to be ego, whatever we know is not knowledge, but only ignorance, according to Bhagavan. So Brahma, uh, Brahma's failure to find the top and his unwillingness to give up his pride and therefore willingness to um, tell a lie all represents the outward going intellect. So long as we allow our intellect to go outwards, it will lie, that is, it will deceive us. Vishnu on the other hand, uh, represents ego and Vishnu burrowing down represents ego turning back within and seeking the truth in its own heart, going sinking deep within. So when ego goes deep within, ego can never know, uh, as ego, we can never know what we actually are because ego is nothing but a, a false awareness of ourself, an awareness of ourself as I am this body. So long as we're aware of ourself as I am this body, 
we cannot know what we actually are, which is just the pure awareness I am. So only when ego is destroyed, can we know what we actually are. So as ego, we can never know what we actually are. That is why it is said in the story, but Vishnu was unable to find the bottom. But Vishnu was humbled by his inability to find, whereas Brahma was, uh, was unwilling to give up his pride. Vishnu was humbled by his inability to find the, the bottom. So that, in the, that the humbling of Vishnu represents the willingness to surrender and subside. And that is where, only when ego is willing to surrender itself completely, that is when the truth will shine forth. And um, then ego will be uh, thereby eradicated. And then what knows the truth is not ourself as ego, but ourself as we actually are. But ourself as we actually, as we actually are, we always know ourself as we actually are. So as Bhagavan said, Jnana is not a new knowledge to be attained. Uh, if, we, if we simply get rid of the wrong knowledge, I am this body, which is ego, uh, that is uh, uh, this false awareness, I am this body, that is ego. If we get rid of that, what remains is the true knowledge, uh, the pure awareness, I am. So that I am is ever shining. All we need to do is to give up the adjuncts, uh, uh, this body, uh, that, that means our identification with this body. If we give up our identification with any adjuncts, what remains is the pure I am, which is what always knows itself as it actually is. So that's why Bhagavan said, Jnana is not a new knowledge to be attained. All we need to do is to get rid of a wrong knowledge, meaning ego, and what remains is the true knowledge, uh, which is pure awareness. Um, so in this verse, Mur uh, Mur that, well, well, what is, yes, we can say Murugana because he composed the verse, so it was actually Bhagavan saying, this is describing the state of attainment. When Murugana asked Bhagavan to write a verse explaining the significance of seeing Deepam, um, Bhagavan uh, not only talked about the state of attainment, but also the means to achieve that state. Uh, that is why this verse of, uh, in which Bhagavan described the si signification of, uh, of uh, seeing the Deepam is, uh, is particularly important because Bhagavan is very clearly here describing the means by which we can, um, we, by which we can attain this goal of uh, annihilation of ego. Um, Again, this verse is structured very much like the beginning one. First, the first half of the verse is, um, or the first nearly three quarters of the verse, is the subject complement, whereas the verse ends with the subject. So we'll begin from the end. Um, the, the, the whole of the, the subject is um, Bhu Mati Enum Anamale Chudakan. Uh, uh, may um, that means the the truth or reality, the actual truth or reality of seeing the light on an amale, uh, bu uh, mati enum, which is called the center of the earth. So just like the heart is, uh, that, that is Arunachya here set, uh, represents the heart, which is the center of all things. That's why it is said, Aaron actually is said to be the center of the earth. So that is the subject. What, what is the truth of seeing this light? That is what he explains in the rest of the verse, which is the first uh, nearly three lines. Um, what he says there is, it can, there, uh, um, there, uh, um, it, it, there are various parts of, of this. It, um, that is the main part is, um uh advaitam am me uh ahachura khan gebu uh advaitam is, is a tamil form of the sanskrit word advaita means non-dual advaitam am which is non-dual me means real ahachura chuda means light it's the same word Bhagavan is using for deepam in the in, in the next line uh aha in in Tamil, aham has two meanings. 
firstly, it's the Sanskrit first person pronoun, but it's also a, 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 there's also a separate word in Tamil, aham, which means um, inside, uh, heart, home, um, or house. I mean, it, 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 it's, or, or it can also mean love. It, it had various meanings in Tamil, but it's entirely separate from the Sanskrit word. But um, Bhagavan often uses it in, in, in a context in which it can be taken either in the Sanskrit sense to mean I or in the Tamil sense to mean heart or home. But since I is the heart and home, um, it, in effect, it means the same. So Ahachuda can either be taken to mean the inner light or the light of I. So Advaita Mame Ahachuda Kange 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 means seeing. Um, uh, that is the non-dual, uh, the non-dual real light of I, seeing the non-dual real light of I. So the, the last two lines of the verse mean the, um, the, 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 true, the actual truth or reality of seeing the light on anomaly, which is said to be the center of the earth, is seeing the non-dual uh, real uh, light of I. And, but how to see that non-dual real light of I? That is what he explains in the first two lines of the verse. Uh, the, um, he begins with one clause is, Itanuve nanam enumatie nitu. That means giving up the, the, uh, the awareness. Mati can mean mind, but in this sense, it means it's used in the sense of the, the awareness or the false awareness. Itanuve uh, nanam. This body alone is I. So this, this false awareness, this body alone is I, giving that up. Up buddhi idiati. Idiate porundi. Up buddhi means that um, buddhi can mean intellect, but it's actually referring to the dehatma buddhi, the, the false awareness, I am this body, which is what he talks about in the first line. So up buddhi here means that false awareness, I am this uh, body. Idiate uh, porundi, fixing it in the heart. Um, or that, that is that which is aware of itself as um, I am this body, that we should fix in the heart. So how do we do so? That is the, the key word in this verse is the, ne is the next uh, term, aha no kal. Aha again here to mean either I or within. Noku means, um, means uh, looking, by looking within, by seeing within. Um, so actually this aha no kal, we can take this, uh, we can connect this with uh, three things. By aha no ku, that is by, we can take aha no ku as self-attentiveness, that's a simple way of translating it. Uh, by self-attentiveness, giving up the, um, the, the false awareness, I am this body. By self-attentiveness, fixing the mind in the heart, and by self-attentiveness, seeing the true light of I, the non-dual true light of I. So the, the, as I say, this ahanokal is the key term in this verse. Uh, noku means um, uh, looking or seeing. Um, uh, nokal means by seeing, by seeing or, or by looking at within or by looking at I, in other words, by being self-attentive, we need to give up the false identification with this body. Um, we need to fix the mind which was identified with the body. We need to fix it in the heart. And thereby we need to see the real light, uh, the real non-dual light of, uh, of pure self-awareness, which is what Ahachuda implies. So what Bhagavan is saying in this verse is, if we... Uh, uh, if we read the verse in the order in, in which the words come, giving up the awareness that this body alone is I, uh, that mind abiding in the heart by self-attentiveness, seeing the non-dual light of I is the actual truth of seeing the light of anomaly, which is called the center of the world. If we rearrange it in, in, in the 
natural prose order and also slightly expand it. That means the actual truth of seeing the light on an amelie, which is called the center of the world, is seeing the non-dual real light of I by giving up the, uh, the false awareness, this body alone is I, by fixing that buddhi um, and by that buddhi um, abiding in the heart uh, by a hanoku. Um, yeah, yes, yes. So um, here, Bhagavan has a, um, whenever Bhagavan has the opportunity, he stresses this practice of um, what he calls here a hanoku, what he calls in other places at Mavichara, or he has uses so many terms. But the, the, the key to Bhagavan's teachings, what Bhagavan's teachings are all about, is turning our attention within to see ourselves as we actually are. So he's taken he here when he's explaining the sig the signification of seeing the deepam that is lit on an amalai, he he takes this opportunity to stress but it is it signifies seeing the real non-dual light of i in other words the pure self-awareness in order to see the pure non-dual uh, to see that pure non-dual aware that light of a pure non-dual awareness of self-awareness we need to give up the false awareness this body alone is i we need to fix the mind well we need the mind needs to abide firmly in the heart and the means to do this is, is by ahanoku, by self-attentiveness. So here in this verse, Bhagavan beautifully expresses the, the core of his teachings while explaining the signification of seeing the light um, uh, uh, that is lit on the top of an amalai. <laughs> 